we're going to walk through the law of reciprocity technical exercise together. So I have made a setup similar to what you guys will be working with at home. Hopefully you've had a chance to read through the assignment instructions, but this video is designed to help you if you run into any roadblocks or struggles through the process. So definitely make sure you've watched that camera function setup video before you start in on this technical exercise, because we want to make sure that your camera is optimized for shooting in manual mode before we get started. So you'll notice in my setup here, I have my camera positioned about four feet away from my subject here, this awesome Grecian vaporwave, highly aesthetic dude. And my subject is about eight feet away from the wall behind him. And I have a couple of objects uh, that are even past him behind where my camera is that you're going to see go in and out of focus as we do the law of reciprocity exercise. The goal here is for you guys to become really familiar with how to change your settings in your camera, where those settings are located, and really understanding the interrelatedness of those settings from one to another. So before we get started, the first thing you need to do is create a chart specifically on a piece of paper for this assignment called the law of reciprocity. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. So the first thing that we have to do is actually create a chart, which we write out law of reciprocity, and we're going to be using that chart to track how our shutter speed changes as we change our aperture values. So this is going to make a lot more sense once I start doing it, as opposed to seeing the chart in front of you. But the first thing that I know that we're going to do is put our ISO to constant. We're not going to move that or change that throughout this entire demonstration. So I'm going to set that to 400 and I'll make sure to set my camera to 400 and it is going to be 400 all the way throughout. The next thing I need to do is write down all of my f-stops or all of my apertures. Um, some lenses, again, aperture is lens dependent. Some lenses start with a lower aperture like f1.4 or f2.8 and others like the kit T3Is that some of you will be using for our class don't start till f4 or f5.6. But regardless, I'm gonna write them all out so you can see what that pattern is and see how we'll be using that for our demonstration today. So I know that if I start with F1.4 and F2, I can figure out all the rest of my apertures based on those two starting points. And I can do that by multiplying each one by two every other time. And that's gonna tell me each of my full stops. So 1.4 times 2 is 2.8. 2 times 2 is 4. 2.8 times 2 is 5.6. And now I'm going to move this up a little bit so you can see. 4 times 2 is 8. 5.6 times 2 is a decibel number that I cannot figure out in my head. So in photography, we're going to round that over to F11. 8 times 2 is 16. And 11 times 2 is 22. And so hopefully at this point, you can kind of see how that pattern works. And you can write out your f-stop list at any given time. Something to note is that when you're looking at your camera's capabilities, many times you'll have one-third stops, which exist for your apertures. So you might have an f1.4, but then an f1.8. So there's middle stops in between each of these, which is a really great thing about digital cameras which film cameras don't necessarily have that opportunity. With a film camera, you would have just these aperture numbers. With digital cameras, we have the opportunity to subdivide these into thirds. For the purposes of this exercise though, what I'd like you to do is work with your full stops instead of your third stop, so just these numbers that you see right here, and you'll calculate from there. The other thing I'm going to do before we uh, actually start taking pictures is I'm going to set my ISO to 400 for every single one of these numbers because I know that that's our variable that's going to stay constant. Okay. 
Okay, and now we are ready to photograph. So I've talked about my setup, kind of how things are arranged. I wanna make sure that my subject is set uh, with some really nice, even light falling onto them. Uh, and I don't want that subject uh, to be anything that can move. So don't have a parent or a friend sit for you for this. It needs to be something similar to like a personal item from the typology exercise uh, or the typology project rather that you can photograph without it moving. Um, in my setup, I have included a white bounce just to throw a little bit more reflective light onto the other side of that object. But honestly, you can keep it pretty simple make sure that your subject is well lit and that you're not photographing your subject right in front of a window because that will blow it out and it will become backlit. The other thing I've added to my setup is this uh, X-Rite color checker card. And that card is what I'm gonna be using to white balance all of my pictures in the following Lightroom demo that happens after this exercise. Cool, so let's get started. Okay, so I have my camera set up and right now I have my ISO set to 400. So you're gonna wanna make sure that that variable is set. It's not going to change. The other thing I want to do is make sure I know how to change my shutter speed. In the case of this camera, it's this little wheel up at the top. I can see the shutter moving as I change it just like that. And I also wanna find where I can change that f-stop number. Now, if you're not getting a screen at all in the background, by the way, uh, you can find that display button on top of your camera, the back of your button or uh, the back of your camera or your info button, and that will pull up all of your display settings for your camera. Uh, on Canon, in order to change my aperture, I need to hold down the AV button and uh, use this wheel slider if I have a T3i or a T8i to make that change. If I have a later Canon, generally there'll be a wheel like on the back of my camera, for example, that will change that aperture number. If you have Nikon, uh, also make sure that you know how to change that aperture. Many times you can do it in that display screen on the back by going over and selecting it and then starting to modify that f-stop number. Okay, the other thing I wanna look for is my light meter or my EV meter, which I can see on the display here on the back of my camera. I can also see it when I actually look through my viewfinder. Cool. While I'm looking through my viewfinder, what I'm gonna want to do is find focus. So you can focus on your object by using your focus ring on your camera, or if you want to use autofocus, you just wanna make sure that your subject is in focus and stays in focus for the entire assignment. We don't want that to change because again, we're keeping that variable the same so we can see how the background changes as we walk through this exercise. So the next thing I wanna do is find my very most wide open aperture number. In the case of this lens, which is the Canon Nifty 50, it's f1.8. For you, it might be f4, it might be f5.6. We want to find what that lowest aperture number is. Um, now, I also know I'm going in full stops, and because I can't go as low as f1.4, my next closest stop is f2, so I'm going to start there. The next thing I want to do is find appropriate exposure, and now here's the fun part where we change the shutter speed, and we're going to be recording this number on the document that I have created. So I am going to change just my shutter speed. Again, I'm not changing focus. And I'm gonna get that dot right there in the middle. At one 250th of a second, that carrot is right in the middle and I am properly exposed. Focus is good, ISO is constant at 400 this whole time, not gonna change. So I can take that first photo. Cool. All right, so now I have a test photo with my color checker card. I'm gonna get that color checker card out of the way. And if you don't have a color checker card or a gray card at home, you can absolutely use something that's gray or neutral toned to help you find white balance. It doesn't have to be super specific, but something gray will always put you in the right direction. Okay, 
So at f2.0, I'm at 1 250th of a second. I'm going to make sure I write that down. And I'm going to take a real photo without the color checker card. Awesome. All right. So my next closest aperture is f2.8. So I'm going to change my aperture. And now it looks like I'm a little underexposed, so I'm going to have to change my shutter to compensate. And so I'm going to go to 1 1 60th and take a photo. And I'm going to write that down at f2.8. I'm at 1 1 60th of a second. Now, I'm in a position where I'm using uh, natural light coming through, and my natural daylight might change or alter a little bit but it's been pretty consistent this afternoon. Make sure you're photographing in a place with really nice, consistent light, or at least as much as possible. Okay, so now I am going to go to F4, which is next on my list. I'm gonna see how my EV meter is doing here. Again, it's underexposed, so, oh, looks like 180th. I'm gonna take that picture right there. 180th of a second, cool. My next aperture is 5.6. Now again, my EV meter is showing that I'm underexposed because I've closed down, so I'm gonna change my shutter speed to 1 40th of a second and take a picture. Cool, okay, next is F8. I'm going to change my shutter, it looks like, to 1 20th of a second. Great. And take that picture. Awesome. And so my exposure is being maintained throughout. Uh, F11 is next. So it looks like my shutter speed needs to be 1 10th of a second in order to keep that carrot right there in the middle. And I'll take that photo. Great. And now I'm going to go up to F16. So my shutter speed becomes one fifth of a second. And I take that photo. Cool. What happens when I go to F22? Well, again, I'm underexposed, so I need to compensate for that. It looks like I am at, this is the notation for half or double the length of one fifth of a second. So here we go. Awesome. So I'll stop there. And now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different possible exposures for each of my full stops. So the thing that I want you guys to realize is that you can see a couple of patterns happening. One, you can see the pattern of the numbers changing position uh, on your shutter speed, and they're actually becoming uh, you know, either halved or doubled depending on the direction of your aperture full stops changing. The other thing I want you guys to see in the photos is that as we close down that aperture, like here we are at F22, I have my little pop EV in the background, totally in focus here with a really closed down aperture. But when we started at that really open aperture, that little pop EV is super out of focus and you can kind of tell what it is, but it totally changes the aesthetic of the image as our aperture numbers shift. So that is, in essence, the law of reciprocity. Now we're gonna go back and edit some of these photos together so you guys will see how to get them into Lightroom. Awesome.